One of these days, every demon in hell is going to have to bow their knee to Jesus Christ. The devil's going to tell all of his followers, hey boys, I ripped you off. Hallelujah. I wasn't anybody, but you see that one on the throne? His name's Jesus. He's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Hey, you know the devil's oneness. Yeah, he knows there's one God, but he trembles. There's three, you'd have a nervous breakdown. Hallelujah. 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 One day, all the gods that ever lived that claimed to be deity, Baha'i, Shinto, Ramakrishna, Hare Krishna, they're all going to get all their followers down, even the Ayatollah Khomeini, old Petro breath. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to get all their followers down and say, hey, boys, I wasn't anything, but you see that one on the throne? His name's Jesus. Hey, I'd not rather crown him Lord of Lords and King of Kings right here than wait to eternity and have it to do it before I go to judgment. Wouldn't you? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Let's, one more time, let's say that name, Jesus. Jesus. I like to say that name. When you say that name, you have more authority than the United Nations. When you say that name, you have more authority than the President of the United States. When you say that name, you have more authority than the padrone of the mafia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, friend. Nobody can bind him but us. Nobody can stop him but us. I want to lose him in my life, don't you? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. I'm so excited about what God's doing in 1981. I'm so excited what God's doing in 1981, I said. Hallelujah. Some of you are excited. It's just all inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I was praying with a man a few weeks ago in a state prison, and he was a giant. He looked at me, and he said, God won't give me the Holy Ghost. I said, yes, he will. He said, no, he won't. And I said, yes, he will. He said, God won't give me the Holy Ghost. And I said, yes, he will, buddy. And he thumped me in the chest and said, no, he won't. And I thumped him back in the chest and said, yes, he will. One of the inmates said, Brother Mahaney, that man has killed six men with his bare hands. And I went over and I said, boy, brother, I really appreciate you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I said, God will give you the Holy Ghost. I watched that man raise his hands and big tears running down his face. And I watched him begin to speak in tongues as God baptized him in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I'm trying to tell you that you can't get deep enough that God can't save you. There's nowhere you can get where God can't save you. The only unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. You say, well, what's that? Well, the scribes and Pharisees said Jesus cast out Satan by the spirit of Satan, and Jesus said they blasphemed the Holy Ghost because they attributed the works of God to the works of the devil. That's right. That's right. That's right, friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's impossible to blaspheme the Holy Ghost before you get the Holy Ghost, or we would have all blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Paul was a blasphemer. But if you are here tonight and you're breathing and you can feel something, it's possible for you to find salvation for your soul tonight. Hallelujah. We walked in Tennessee State Prison where James Earl Ray is, and, and Brother Ray still needs some work on him. And, and uh, the warden pointed out a man standing over there. The man was a huge man, big old red beard, red bushy hair. And he said, that's the meanest man we've ever had in the history of the Tennessee prison system. And he's been here 20 years for double murder. We kept him in the hole for 22 months in solitary confinement. And today that man is a licensed United Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> Has 100 men to God in the last 12 months behind those walls. He's still in prison. 
He's a licensed UP. So we give him a license. We just give him a local license. Figure that'd be all he'd need. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I feel revival in this place tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I feel revival in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad you don't have to be rich to be part of this. I'm glad you don't have to be good looking. That ought to thrill you guys. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad you don't have to be talented. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad you don't have to be skinny. You ought to be running the aisles, Brett. Hallelujah. 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 But I'm glad all you got to do is repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get your Bible, turn to the book of Amos. I'm going to preach to you tonight, and sometime during the preaching, I'm going to work in as much of my testimony as I can. I don't give it much anymore. Brother Haney said, called me and said, we've announced you're giving your testimony. You ever try to say no to Kenneth Haney? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Amos, the third chapter, I want to read the 7th through the 12th verse. That's the Old Testament. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces at Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria, and behold the great tumult in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary, there shall be even round about the land. And he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria. This twelfth verse I want to call your attention to. Thus saith the Lord, as a shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear. As the shepherd takes out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear. With the reading of these scriptures tonight, I want to preach to you about the shepherd and the remnant. Hallelujah. The shepherd and the remnant. You may be seated. God bless you. Hey, God's always been in the remnant business. I said God's always been in the remnant business. Somebody said, are you narrow-minded enough just think those baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost is going to make it? And I said, I'm worse than that, buddy. I believe just about half of them is going to make it. That's right. I believe you've got to go by the book. I don't care what church you go to. You can have UPC stamped all over your body, and if you don't go by the book, you're not going to no rapture. It's not what thus saith Charlie Mahaney or... Kenny Haney or Nathan Urshan or Tom Tenney or Paul Price or anybody else. It's what thus saith the Word of God. God's always had a people out of a people. God's always been in the remnant business. I like this scripture tonight. It deals with the shepherd. Hey, friend, there's nothing like seeing a shepherd that really cares for the sheep. You know, he'll lay down his life for those sheep. And Amos the prophet begin to talk. And Amos the prophet talked about someday that the lion of sin would come and attack Israel. And Israel would have a shepherd that would come. Now, one of the commentaries I read, and a shepherd in the Holy Land told me one time that when a lion would ravage one of the sheep, that the shepherd would literally go down and look that lion right in the face and take the remnant of that sheep that had been ravaged out of the mouth of the lion. 
That's what Amos the prophet was talking about. Two legs or just a piece of an ear would all be the left. Friend, why do we have to let sin tear our life apart before we finally lift our hand to the shepherd of the ages? Listen, the Old Testament writers used very vivid imagery when they talked about sin and, and eternal life and different things like that. And when the prophet began to relate what sin's really like, I know Hollywood has made sin beautiful. We've become so tactful we've lost our tact. We've whitewashed sin. It's not adultery anymore. It's having an affair. It's not fornication. It's a little harmless making out. It's not a drunkard. It's the helpless inebriate that can't help himself. It's not the dope head. It's the poor young person that got caught up in the snare and the trap of drugs. Hey, listen, friend, you can't make sin pretty by planting flowers around it. The only way to name it is when sin is finished, it brings forth death. It's not a brook. It's a whirlpool. It's not a soft summer breeze. It's a hurricane. It's not a pen knife. It's a guillotine. Friend, it's not a beautiful peacock. It's a blood-splattered buzzard. Shakespeare had a drama, and in the drama behind the silver veil was a hideous skull. You know what I want to do tonight? I want to pull back that silver veil. I want you to let, let you see what sin really is. It's not beautiful. It's not sparkling. It's not exciting. When sin is finished with a human, it brings forth death. If sin's so fantastic, how come so many of the top movie stars' children are committing suicide? Yeah. If sin's so cool, how come Elvis Presley shot dope until he died? If sin's so cool, how come Jimi Hendrix died from an overdose of drugs? If sin's so cool, why did Janis Joplin die from an overdose of drugs? If sin's so cool, why did James Arness's son kill himself? Why didn't Mary Tyler Moore's child kill himself? Why did Paul Newman's son kill himself? Hey, listen, they had everything. Friend, things is not the answer. You can have everything in this world, but if you don't know Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost, you don't have anything. <laughs> Buddy, you can know all about botany, but if you don't know the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, you don't know anything. You can know all about geology, but if you don't know the rock of ages, you don't know anything. Friend, you can know all about astronomy, but if you don't know the bright and morning star, you don't know anything. You can know all about chemistry, but if you can't get the stain of sin off of your life, you don't know anything. You can know all about bricklaying, but if you don't know that cheap cornerstone, you don't know anything. Hey, I'd rather know the power of that name than anything else this world has to offer. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, friend, the prophet likened sin unto a roaring lion. He likened sin unto a roaring lion. Job said, Thou huntest me as a fierce lion. You know the story of Job. I don't have to go over it again. Friend, everything Job had was taken. His health, his wife, the one that promised to, you know, love and obey and stick with him through thick and thin, richer for poor. I don't remember what all they say. I've been married too long. Seems like I've been married all my life. Yeah. You know the one that was going to be there when he needed her the most? That long-jawed woman said, why don't you just curse God and die? But thank God something happened to the backbone of Job. He slid out from under that sackcloth and said, you talk like a foolish woman. Friend, he was torn apart. He was ravaged by sin. And Job said, it's like a fierce lion. It's like a fierce lion that hunteth my soul. Hey, listen, friend. David was the king of Israel. David had everything. You know where David got in trouble? It was time for kings to be to battle. It was time for kings to go to battle. And David was up on the rooftop, had him a glass of Lipton. It wasn't time to be up there cooling it. It was time to be out in the battle. That's when people mess up. That's when preachers mess up. That's when saints mess up. Friend, when we're supposed to be having revival and you're doing everything but having revival. There's nothing wrong with playing golf. I guess if you want to chase a little white ball around a cow pasture. 
But buddy, when it's time to pray, it's time to pray. There's nothing wrong with that. What's that other stuff? They knock that ball off them walls. I never played it to racquetball. I quit the rackets when I got saved. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with a guy going out there and playing racquetball. If he wants to sweat and stink. I'm more the holiday in type. But buddy, when it's time to go to God in prayer and it's time to come to church, it's time to forget everything else and come in and lift holy hands unto God. Listen, it was time for kings to be in battle. You know where David was? He was up on the roof. He looked over, heard water splash, and a pretty girl giggle. That's when he got in trouble. That's when he got in trouble, when he should have been in battle. It's not time to hang our harps on the willows. It ain't time to compromise. It ain't time to retire. It's time to refire. I hear too much talk about let's have a retreat in Pentecost. My God, I didn't come in this thing retreating. I came in this thing charging. Hallelujah. It's time to preach and pray and fast and get a hold of God. And after all these things happened to David, David said, lest he tear my soul, rending it in pieces like a lion. Hey, listen, if there's anybody in the book I can identify with, it's the Apostle Peter. He wasn't no rubberist. That's right. I'm so sick of them sissies in Pentecost. I had one little old turkey. He said, Brother Man, I can't get a girlfriend. I said, My God, buddy, no wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a girl come up to me, man. She looked like Lou Ferrigno or something. She said, Brother Mahaney, I can't get a boyfriend. And I said, no wonder, man. They want a wife, not a bodyguard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, ain't nobody run their boats through Peter's nest before he got saved. I like him. I like to preach about him, friend. I like to preach about the apostle Peter. He just about lost it. Yes, he did. He denied the Lord three times in the cock crowed yonder on a barn door somewhere. He just about lost everything he had. And later when Peter began to write his epistle, he said, listen, your adversary, the lion, your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You think he don't want to devour your life? Do you think he wants you young couples to stay together? He wants you in divorce court. You think he wants you girls chased, living for God? He wants you giving your body to every boy in Stockton, California. Listen, the Apostle Paul, he said, when I want to do good, evil's always before me. He said, I'm the least of all the apostles. He said, I'm the least of the saints. Then he said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And when Paul wrote, he said, no man stood with me. He said, but God delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. Hey, listen, friend, I realize sin's terrible. I realize the finished product of sin. I realize it's not beautiful to see. So I was in New York City a few weeks ago, and, and I like to get and ride the subway by myself down to where everybody's afraid to go. And if you act like you're a tourist or you act like you're afraid, they'll mug you. I just put on my shades and my leather coat and knock them off the sidewalk. They don't bother me. That's right. I was downtown New York City and saw those winos laying on 42nd Street on the Bowery, vomit caked the front of their clothes. I saw girls 13 years old out there, hookers trying to sell their body to the highest bidder. Listen, friends, sin's not a pretty picture. Sin's not a pretty picture. I'd like to take you to death row with me and see those men waiting to be strapped in to the electric chair. Sin's not pretty. It's like a lion that pounces on you and tears your throat out and your life out. You know, a lion will watch his prey for days and never move. It'll watch us pray until it gets to its weakest, most unexpected moment. And it'll jump and it'll, with one swipe, it'll tear its jugular vein out. And his prey will be gone. That's the way sin is. Friends, sin don't get you when you're in the middle of revival. Sin don't get you down at camp meeting or landmark. You know where sin gets you? He waits until, you know, you haven't prayed for a couple of days. He waits until your job and money pushes all the cares of God out of your life. And then he waits at your weakest point and sin knows just how to attack. That's right. But friend, one day there was a shepherd born. Hallelujah. 
One day the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, was born. Hallelujah. One day a baby cried in Bethlehem's manger. Hallelujah. One day a king was born and his name was Jesus. Hallelujah. Chapter 1 of the book of Matthew said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now Joseph, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Back then they stole him for adultery. Today we make movie stars out of him. Put him on three's company or something. Hallelujah. Listen, friend. Listen. That baby was born for one reason. He came to be the healing balm of Gilead. Hallelujah. 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 And friend, you talk about a shepherd. You talk about a shepherd. Friend, the Bible said the shepherd had a sheep and he lost that sheep. And the shepherd went down and he found that one lost sheep. And he took it and put it on his shoulder and said, come on home, honey. Friend, you talk about shoulders. I'm talking about the shoulders that carried the cross. And Isaiah said the government is on his shoulders. Listen, he takes the remnant. The prophet said that the shepherd would go down to the mouth of the lion and the shepherd would take what was left. After sin has torn a person apart, after sin has torn your life apart, you know what the shepherd does? He goes right down to the mouth of the lion and he'll take out what's left. It might be just a couple legs or a piece of an ear. It might be just a little bit of somebody that can say, God help me. And he'll wait until you have cry out to him. Then the shepherd will come down and he'll take what's left. He'll pick up the broken pieces. He'll take your shattered life and he'll make a beautiful instrument out of it. Hallelujah. The demoniac of Gadara. Friend, when Jesus' boat raked against the shore of Gadara, had a boy come running out of the tombs. You know his trouble? He got too close to the road. Hallelujah. He got too close to the king. Some of your trouble tonight is you've got too close to something that can change your life. You might leave this place, but you'll never feel this again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to watch people. I like to watch people that never been to a Pentecostal service. Different people get off on different things. That's what I get off on. I like to watch people that sin has torn their life apart. I've seen motorcycle gang riders. I'm talking about we prayed the leader of the Bandidos motorcycle gang through a few weeks ago in Texas. They say it's the meanest motorcycle gang in America. All the hell's angels become movie stars. <laughs> the Bandidos stood six foot six and weighed over 300 pounds. I watched that man. He's in prison for murder, doing life. His life has been torn apart. He's killed two men since he's been in prison. I watched him with his hands raised and the power of God moving in his life. I watched him a month later when we come back carrying his Bible, had a haircut, hallelujah, teaching search for truth. You know what God done? He went right down and faced that lion, the devil, and took out the remnant of what was left, and he made something beautiful, and he made something beautiful. That's the shepherd I'm talking about. Hallelujah. 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 When sin has torn your life apart, hey, I know a shepherd don't come and make something beautiful out of it. Hallelujah. 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 Friend, one day Jesus was walking across the temple courtyard. It took 40 years to build that temple. It took 10,000 men to build that temple. But I want you to know the temple that was walking across the temple was far greater than the temple that Solomon built because the Bible said one greater than Solomon has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as Jesus walked along, all of a sudden, the crowd parted, and a woman come running screaming, sweaty, dirty, stringy-headed, right in front of Jesus. Her life had been torn apart. She had been put down to a place that she was bartering herself on the street, taken in the very act of adultery. Yes, sir. And they said, Lord, the law says stone her. What do you say? Law says kill her. Them Jews wanted, his, wanted some blood. The law said kill her. And Jesus stooped down and rolled on the ground. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what do you think he wrote? I don't know. The Bible don't say. But I know this, this is the only time Jesus ever wrote. You can go to all the libraries you want to, and there's not one book Jesus ever wrote. That's right. You can go to all the conservatories you want to. And there's not one song Jesus ever wrote. Listen, all the great, great men that stepped their footprints in the sands of time have left their, their books and ledgers. Confucius has his book. Henry David Thoreau wrote Walden. 
All the great men that's lived has left their book. But Jesus never wrote a book. You know why? He didn't want to put it on parchment and paper. He wanted a book where living epistles known and read of all men. Friend, we're God's book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He looked at that woman. He looked at the crowd. And the Bible said he stooped down. Hey, I'm so glad he stooped down. I'm so glad he stooped down. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he became a man. I'm so glad he became a little lower than the angels. He took off his, his crown and he gave the stars his sparkle. He took off his blue mantle and he gave it to the sky. And God came down over the morning star, over the north star, and he came down and was born among us. He stooped down. Some of us are so holy we can't touch an old filthy hippie. That's right. That's right. Some of our fine Pentecostal folks asked me a while back, said, Brother Mahaney, would you baptize a boy with long hair? Yeah, man, I'd pull them slobs up with their ponytail. Hallelujah. You would? Yeah, I'd baptize short-haired women too. Hallelujah. 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 Tell them to quit cutting their hair. I'd baptize long-haired men and, and tell them to go get a haircut. Hey, listen, friend, you can't get good enough to get God. You can't get good enough to get God. You can't say enough hey oh Marys to get good enough to get God. You can't join enough social clubs and, and odd fellas and masons and all that stuff to get good enough to get God. The only thing that can make you good enough is when the shepherd comes down and takes that remnant out of the line and takes all the broken pieces and makes a beautiful instrument out of it. He stooped down. Hallelujah. Man, the first time I read that, I just had to boogie a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You pardon me if I boogie one. I used to boogie for the devil. Yeah, this is Saturday night, man, 15 years ago. I'd have been out to the someplace called the Hungry Eye or the Green Onion or Whiskey Go-Go or someplace like that. Tell them my talking about that. Hallelujah. And I'd been out there boogieing. Man, I'd been doing the walk to see and, and carrying on. And friend, it's Saturday night, and I found Jesus. And you think I'm not going to dance for him a little bit. Hallelujah. I had a right to dance for him. I had a right to praise him. Hallelujah. Hey, I didn't quit dancing. I just switched partners. Hallelujah. 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 I never quit drinking. I just switched spigots. Hallelujah. Got off of Jack Daniels and Ripple and Thunderbird and Boone's Farm, Strawberry Hill and Seeger's VO, and got on the fountain of living water. I got me a drink out of Joel's place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, this is sad. They're out there trying to duplicate what we feel right now. It's tearing their life apart. And we're going to get drunk on the Holy Ghost tonight. Now I know we got these social Christians that kind of sip it a little bit. Spiritual social drinkers. Oh, Brother Manny, just give me about two fingers full. Yeah, I've been to parties like that. What would you like? Would you like a martini? Huh? Extra dry? No, I said, give me a quart of that Jack Daniels, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just take it out, pop the cork, throw the cork away, turn it up and chug a lug. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, I never did like social drinkers, and I don't like them in the church. I'm not talking about natural. I doubt if any of you have been slipping out to a joint, getting a hit. But I'm talking about spiritual. we got people like that. So dignified. So cool. Ain't you cool? No, you're a hypocrite, what you are. You love the world more than you love God. That's right. Something wrong with you when people love a football game more than you love Jesus Christ and being born again. And they take that jug and they turn it up. Man, if you don't want it, give it to me. Hallelujah. 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 Man, if you don't want to be one God apostolic Jesus name, tongue-talking Pentecost, if you don't want to get drunk on the Holy Ghost, you get out of the way and give me that jug. I'll chug a lug it. I'll chug a lug it. I want to get drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I think God's tired of fooling with these traditional old line Pentecostals that sing, I shall not be moved, and they mean it. You come in, lift your little pink palms to Jesus and think you're doing him some big favor. That's right. 
That's right. Then once in a while on Sunday morning, if the lesson's good enough, you'll work up a little crocodile tear and let it crawl down your cheek. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, you know what God's looking for? God's looking for some more young people and some more drug addicts and some more winos and street walkers and bikers that don't care what anybody thinks. That'll say, hey, I found it. My life was torn apart. And the shepherd came down. And the shepherd took what was left of my life. And he made something beautiful. And he made something beautiful. Something beautiful. Hey, listen, I tried all my life to find what I got now. You know what? Some simple-minded, this boy had the IQ of a houseplant. Had an accident. He was struck with a thought. He had the gall and the audacity and the brass to look at me and say, I finally stepped down, Reverend Mahaney, and got in the church. I said, no, you didn't, Jack. You didn't step down to get in the church, boy. You stepped up and got in the church. You don't step down to get a hold of Jesus Christ, friend. He came down to get us. He reached down and we had to reach up to get a hold of his hand. Hey, listen, friend. Everybody needs to experience this. Everybody needs to talk in code. This is the greatest thing in the world. And if you didn't want to move with God, you should have got somebody else. I'm not going to stand there and call out that as Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not on trial tonight. You're on trial. Sit there and take notes on my hand. And it costs us not on trial. You're on trial. Hallelujah. Listen, I tried everything to find this. Friend, I tried everything from we drink after shave lotion. We drink black walnut flavoring. We've done everything. Shot, listerine in the vein, coffee in the vein, wild turkey whiskey in the vein, worship the devil, run around the big old black cape on, freaking old ladies out. Had me a mustache and a goatee and went to a Dracula movie one day and wore my cape. And I was standing there after the movie and a little kid walked out and said, Mom, look, a real one, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, Satanism is not where it's at. Witchcraft is not where it's at. Ouija boards is not where it's at. Seances is not where it's at. I'm going to tell you where it is, friend. It's in the shepherd of the ages reaching down and picking you up and putting you on his shoulder and saying, come on home. Come on home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friend, I sought all my life for something. Listen, I fought too hard to get this. I heard a country song. I'm not a country music fan. I never would get, never did get too much into redneck music. But I heard a country song a few years ago. When you're running down my country, boy, you're walking on the fight inside of me. Buck Haggard or somebody sang it. If you're smiling, I know you're a hee-haw fan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, when you go tamper with what I got on Pentecost, and you go tamper with the precious blood of Jesus, and you go tamper with the power of God that's able to reach down and redeem a sinner, friend, you're getting on the fighting side of God. Listen, God can reach down and take a life that's been broken to pieces. That's been broken to pieces. Time after time, I shot drugs and my heart would quit beating and my brother would beat me on the chest and get my heart going again trying to find something that's satisfied. We chanted in the graveyard, chanted to the devil. We thought if we could just find one more big score, friend, that would make us happy. We thought if we could just get us a, a, a good lid, you know, that'd make us happy. If we could get some good acid, that'd make us happy. If we could get some good speed, that would make us happy. But, friend, that didn't make us happy. While we was getting high, we was finding out and trying to figure out how we was going to score to get enough money to make some, get some dope the next day. It didn't satisfy. But one day, friend, I came to an old-fashioned altar. A preacher got up and preached me to an altar. I found something that satisfied me. It's been 15 years, and I still hadn't desired the old world out there. Somebody asked me, was you ever in jail after you was saved? I was in jail after I was preaching. I was in jail for an old charge. You see, God forgives the sin, but the courts don't a lot of times. 
I went out to the prison farm to visit some of the convicts. In fact, the convict I was visiting was my brother. And my brother said, hey, my hey, the cops are looking for you. And I said, nah, man, you're crazy. I said, I've been, I got the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching now. He said, well, the cops are looking for you. I turned around, there's a great big old police officer standing there. I thought he was Matt Dillon. <laughs> and he had a picture of what I looked like before I got saved. And he's looking at me. He said, I'm looking for Charles Mahaney. And I said, you got him, buddy. He said, no, I said, I'm looking for thee, Charles Mahaney. See, that's not you. I said, yeah, it is. He used to have a big old beard. I'd pull my beard up and chew on it. It's better than carrying a lunch, man. Yeah. Had my hair all bushed out, looked like I'd kissed a light socket. And fur coat with no sleeves in it. A pair of gold cowboy boots with the toes cut out. And I walked, you know, cool. And he said, I'm looking for Charles Mahane. I said, this is me, man. He said, no, it ain't. And he said, Charles Mahane has got called off several tattoos and won't go into them. And, and I said, here are some of them. He said, okay. He said, you have a right to remain silent. Everything you say may and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to counsel. You have a right to one full call when we get you down to the booking. I said, come on, man. Let's go on down to the slammer. And I said, I got one request. He said, what's that? And I said, I want you to let me stand up on the way. They had a paddy wagon. I said, I want to stand up on the way down to jail. He said, why? And I said, I can't preach sitting down. <laughs> we took off when we pulled out of the prison farm. I, I went to preach it. Hallelujah. Friend, I preached on the Holy Ghost. I preached about Jesus' name, baptism. I preached about the oneness of God. I preached about hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't know how to do it then. If I'd have known how to do it then, I'd have given him a 30-second altar call. Hallelujah. 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 Friend, I didn't know about that kind of stuff. I told him about the love of God and the power of God. That cop run that paddy wagon off the road three times. Hallelujah. Friend, listen, I went down there and told him about the power of God. They said, Mahaney, get out of here. Don't ever come back. Listen, friend, I'm talking about a shepherd that can come down and pick you up and touch you on his shoulder and make something out of a broken vessel. Man, when I came to God, I didn't hardly know my own name. That's right. I came to God, and I, I didn't know how old I was. Somebody said, look at your draft card. I burned it up. Look at your driver's license. I had four of them. Each one had a different name on it. I'd be talking to somebody, and I'd just forget what we was talking about. The devil just about torn my mind up. I'd be talking about the weather, and I'd forget what we was talking about. Kind of like the guy went to the doctor and said, you got to help me, doc. I'm losing my memory. The doctor said, how long you had this problem? He said, what problem? <laughs> but listen, friend, God can clean you up. When I walked out that all and got the Holy Ghost, God healed my mind and gave me a photographic memory. I quote the New Testament. Listen, friend, it's not a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. I wanted to be clean. I didn't like what I was. I didn't like robbing and stealing, writing hot checks. I had so many checks bounced, they thought I had a ball team. I didn't like that. I didn't like watching my mother die at 44 years old. I didn't like seeing my only brother strangle to death from an overdose of drugs. But friend, there was no hope. I had no hope. Programs didn't help me. Psychiatrists didn't help me. I run two of them half crazy talking to them. The only thing that could help me was that shepherd came down to the lion. He took that remnant. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, listen, you can't get clean. I was with a group that thought if we ate enough health food, it'd clean us up on the inside, and then it'd clean us up on the exterior. Listen, friend, health food don't make you clean. Turning over a new page don't make you clean. It takes the blood of Jesus. I heard about a missionary the other day that went to a village of cannibals. <laughs> he said he went to a meat market. Now, why in the world a missionary go to a meat market in a village full of cannibals? I don't know. He said they had a sign out there. And the sign said, Natives, $3 a pound. Missionaries, $5 a pound. Hippies, $15 a pound. Said he asked the meat man, said, man, why in the world the different fluctuation in the prices? He said, cannibals, $3 a pound, and 
or natives three dollars a pound and and missionaries five dollars a pound and hippies fifteen so how come hippies are so high and the guy said you ever try to clean one hallelujah 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 listen friend you ever try to clean somebody without the blood of jesus christ you ever try to do it through programs it don't work friend they tried to help me and i got worse i got where there was hate in my life i hated everybody but friend one day a shepherd came and walked right up to that mouth of that lion and took out the remnant and made something beautiful Listen, sin's like a lion tearing your soul to pieces. That's right. I was walking down the street one day. I was the leader of a gang, and there was another gang called the Zombies. And they was looking for our gang, and I, I was by myself. And I usually carried a gun. They usually had a piece on me. I didn't have one. And they jumped out, and we got in a big gang fight. They stabbed me a couple times. I fell in my mother's apartment, and I passed out drunk, and I woke up, and she had... My head in her lap. She was praying, God save my boy. God save my boy. I shoved my mother back and called her a filthy name and pulled my knife out and put it in her throat. I said, woman, if you ever touch me again, I'll kill you. And she said, honey, I used to be a Christian. Your grandpa was a Pentecostal preacher. Hey, the only reason I'm here tonight is because of my mother's prayer. That's right. I was with some friends of mine today, and they said, the only reason we're here today, Brother Mahaney, is because the mama knew how to pray. Hey, listen, I'd rather have a mafia in the Communist Party after me than one old silver-haired mama that knows how to pray. A few weeks later, they took me to my mother's bedside, 44 years old. The doctor told me, said, if you want to see your mother alive, you better get in there, son. I walked over, and she reached her hand up to me, and she said, promise me something, honey. And I said, what do you want? She said, promise me you'll go to a Pentecostal church. I said, okay, Mama, I promise you. And I watched my mother take her last breath, and I watched her go into eternity. I don't care how tough you are, buddy. When your mama's gone, there's somebody gone. Ain't nobody can take Mama's place. I walked out in the hall of that hospital. I cursed. I beat my fist into the wall. I said, if there's somebody uh, gone anywhere, please help me. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, God heard that mother's prayer. God heard that mother's prayer. I met a preacher. I didn't meet an apologizer. I met a preacher. That's right. Man, he had no tact. He thought tact was something you nail rugs down with. I went to church, and I'd never seen anybody like that bunch in my life. I'm not talking about the first church in the refrigerator. Many are cold and most are frozen. I'm not talking about that. Friend, I went into a place where that place was alive. I wasn't even sure the bench I was sitting on was dead. They was clapping their hands and stomping their feet. They came out of the prayer room. And you know how they started the service? I mean, there wasn't nobody out in the sanctuary. Everybody's in the prayer room. But in my home church, you didn't, you didn't testify. You didn't sing until you'd been in the prayer room for 30 minutes. And we started service every night out of the prayer room with a victory march around that place. That was before Pentecost got cool. And buddy, that preacher got up there, and his finger looked like it was a yard long. He pointed that finger at me, and he said, you're going to hell, boy. And I tapped one of the men. I said, I'm whipping your preacher as soon as he gets through. He said, there ain't no hope for you. You're sorry. He said, you're lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. He said, you are sorry. You could chin yourself on a cigarette paper. He said, man, you are sorry. There's no hope for you, you reprobate. Because I thought it was a shame. Such a holy teach me and taught in Jesus' name. I think about going into singing ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I'm not. Hallelujah. I got about as much business singing as I do trying to do gospel magic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And friend, they got to worshiping God. The preacher's wife jumped up on the platform with an accordion strapped on her, spinning around and around, shouting a knot down the back of her hair. She got to weeping and crying. I watched them out there, man. I watched grown men with their hands raised, tears running down their face. People just jumped up and screaming and shouting running the aisles. And I told my buddy, I said, these people are crazy, man. I'm going to get out of here. I jumped up and ran down the middle line, got to the front door, and a big old sister was dancing in front of the door, and I couldn't get out. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I didn't go to a church where the theme song was, wait a little longer, please, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Friend, I'm glad I walked into one singing, give me that old time Pentecostal fire. It's the thing, the very thing. It's what we must acquire. Hey, listen, that's the reason people go to a Pentecostal service. They know we're different. They know we're different. I had a lady stop me in a crusade. I was preaching one night, and she liked to wrung my hand, plumb off of my arm. She said, Reverend Mahaney, I want to tell you something. I said, okay, lady, tell me. She said, I want you to know something. I said, okay, lay it on me, woman. And she said, listen, I didn't think people still preached and worshipped and sang like you people did. She said, the most exciting thing ever happened in our church was one Sunday our pastor was putting the tithing in the pulpit and closed his pants leg up in the door, and he was trying to kick it loose, and we thought he was shouting and almost had revival. I think it's time we give the world something to see, don't you? I think it's time we got back to the second chapter of the book of Acts and praised Him and loved Him and worshipped Him. Modern pseudo-intellectual Pentecostalism. Charismatic renewal. God's laying you. Hey, whatever happened to speaking in tongues and shouting the victory and having revival? Hallelujah. 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 Listen, friend, God's able to come down. God's able to take a remnant. I mean, there's nothing hardly left. The devil's just about torn your life to pieces. And you know what God will do? He'll take what's left after the devil's through. That's right. We give our youth to the devil. We burn ourselves out by the time we're 30 years old on drugs and promiscuity and Satan trips and witchcraft and the occult and everything else in the world. And there's not much left of our life. And finally, when we're just about finished, we'll say, oh, Jesus, and he'll come down and he'll face that devil and he'll take the remnant out and he'll make a beautiful instrument out of it. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, I was in such a place that the street people wouldn't even have nothing to do with me. I'd be sitting there talking to my friends, and, and we were sitting in a bar one night, and, and I pulled my gun out and just went to shooting everybody, digging, jumping under the table, shooting the lights out. I thought I was Matt Dillon or somebody. Yeah, crazy, crazy. And our minds were gone, taking those drugs and praying to Satan. I know people in Satanism that pray four hours every morning before daylight. Chant to the devil four hours before daylight. And it's like pulling eye teeth to get some of you red-hot apostolics to pray ten minutes in the prayer room for revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then wonder why that they're winning more converts than us. Hey, listen, we've got to get sold out to this, folks. This is the only thing that can help. A program can't help. They run me through so many programs, I felt like a computer. It didn't help. It didn't help. They made me look at ink blots and say, what does that look like? I said, you spilt your ink, Doc. He said, get him out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, friend, nothing helped. My life was almost torn completely to pieces. I have felt the claws and the fangs of Satan as he tore my life. I'd lay there at night and I'd take that pistol and I'd put one shell in that 38 and I'd spin that chamber and I'd take it laying there stoned on drugs and I'd click that cylinder up against my head hoping that one of them would be a live shell. I didn't care. But somehow God had his hand on me. Listen, God kept you for a reason. God kept you for a reason. God kept you for a reason. You're not here by accident. God kept you for a reason. Brother Joe, God kept you for a reason. You was driving like a maniac out there in them race cars. That's right. You know why? Because he was going to wait until the devil got through with you. And you'd say, Jesus, I love you. And he's going to reach down and take all those broken pieces. Hallelujah. And make a man of God out of it. Hallelujah. 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 I'm preaching about the shepherd and the remnant tonight. I'm preaching about the shepherd and the remnant tonight. But listen, had that one lost sheep, had that lamb not cried out, it would have died right there in the thicket. Had that lamb not cried out, it would have died in the thicket. I'm so glad one day, I'll never forget as long as I live, cell block J, cell number 14. I'd been in jail over 40 times. This was the second time I was in prison. The last time I went to court, the district attorney told the judge, said, Your Honor, Mr. Mahaney's been in court more than I have. 22 years old, the, the judge said, where do you work? And I said, I don't. He said, where did you work? And I said, I didn't. He said, where are you going to work? And I said, I ain't. 
That's what I thought was life. All I cared about was another bottle of Thunderbird, another lid, another needle. Something had to happen to my life. And I was in prison. They took me to jail, and, and I never got to go to the cells with the rest of the prisoners. They afraid I'd corrupt them, and they put me in solitary confinement. Pitch black, just a no bunk, no commode, no sink, just a pitch black hole there. They took me out, and the, my lawyer told me, he said, try to get your hair to lay down, my handy. My hair was all bushed out. And I went before the judge. The judge said, we're going to make an example out of you. And I said, thank you, Your Honor. My lawyer said, shut up, man. They're going to send you up. They took me to a place called Little Siberia where they kept all the nuts and the people had the detainers and the holes on them. And they said, you've got a visitor. And I said, I don't want to see nobody. And they said, it's a preacher. And I walked out and there stood that preacher, big old smile on his face. He said, I came to see you, Charles. And I said, yeah, I figured that out, preach. He said, could I talk to you? And they had a room where you could visit with attorneys and, and clergymen. And I said, yeah, I'll step into my office, preacher. He said, God cares about you, son. I said, yeah, he must. He's fixed me where he could watch me for the next 20 years. He said, no, you heathen. I seen him at conference in Philadelphia. He said, how you doing, you heathen? <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, listen, God can get you out of here if you'll pray. And I said, I don't know how to pray. How do you rap with God? He said, just talk to him like you would your friends. And I said, no, he'll kill me if I talk to him like that. <laughs> Preacher trying to get me bushwhacked. <clears throat> He said, no, you reprobate, just go back to your cell. And he said, talk to him. I went back to my cell and I said, hey, God, this is me, Mahaney, down here in the pea farm. I said, if you're real and you got all that power, you get me out of jail today and I'll go to church tonight. If you don't, I won't hassle you no more and you don't hassle me no more. And, buddy, I felt the sweetest spirit come right down in that cell. Hallelujah. I mean, just like I feel it right here now, I felt the Spirit of God come right down in that cell, and I begin to sing, I must be saved. Hallelujah! And within an hour, the guard came and said, get your stuff together. So I walked out, and they opened up the doors, and they said, you're free to go. And I said, no, you pigs are going to shoot me and say I tried to escape. And they said, no, an hour ago, at the same time I was praying, the judge called and changed his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had me some pennies that I'd taken a file and filed them down to the size of dimes to use in pay phones. And, and I put one and I called the preacher. I said, hey, preach, this is me, Mahaney. He said, did you bust out? And I said, no, your God busted me out, man. I said, I want to go to church tonight. He said, praise the Lord. And I said, yeah, glory to God. He said, I'll pick you up at 715. I said, right on. So I brushed my beard and drank a bottle of wine, smoked a joint, took some pills. I was getting ready for church. <laughs> preacher helped me in the car. I said, I'm going to preach tonight, preacher. He said, you keep your mouth shut. I'll put you back in the pen. And friend, that's my first trip to a church. Hallelujah. I found something that changed my life. I found a friend that never left me. Hallelujah. I found a friend to stick it closer than a brother. I found somebody that's my counselor. He's my doctor. He's my lawyer. Hallelujah. I found the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I came to an altar. I repented of my sins. I began to praise Him. I began to talk in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! Listen, people came to that preacher. People came to him and said, Listen, if you've got any sense at all, you'll run Mahaney off. He said, Why? I said, He'll steal your car. He'll take the offering. He said, He's no good. Next time I came to church, I'd got me a pair of scissors in the mirror and I'd kind of trim my hair up a little bit, trim my beard up a little bit. Next time I came to church, I'd went down and got me five bucks or three bucks and got me a haircut, shaved my beard. Next time I came to church, I'd went to a garage sale and bought me a suit. I hadn't always wore these expensive $49 rigs, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sear sucker. Sears made it in the sucker bottom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got me a white shirt. Got me a tie about that wide with palm trees hand painted on it. 
came to church that night with a big old family Bible. Hallelujah. 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 Some of those preachers told my pastor, said, run Mahaney off. He'll never be any good. I had one call me the other night and said, Mahaney, what do I have to give you to get you to come and preach a week for me? Hallelujah. Listen, friend, I'm talking about the shepherd that can reach down and take a broken vessel, take a lamb that's been torn apart, and pick him up and put him on his shoulder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She called up Hallelujah. 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 For the government is on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You know what one of the six cities of refuge was named? Shechem. You know what that means? Shoulder. Thank God for that refuge. Thank God for that refuge. Hey, listen, there's been times when we'd be walking when my kids were little. they said, say, Daddy, I'm afraid there's snakes in here. Well, come on, boy, and I just put him up on my shoulder. They weren't afraid they was on Daddy's shoulder. Hallelujah. Brother Mahaney, you ever get afraid? How can I be afraid on Daddy's shoulder? Hallelujah. 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 You're not afraid to go in them prisons? How can I be afraid, friend? I'm on the shepherd's shoulder. The same, same shoulder that carried the cross has got me. Hallelujah. 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 I was preaching one night. I saw a young man. I've told you this before, but half of you wasn't here. The other half don't remember. <laughs> and there was a young man came to the altar. He was down there had his little pink palms folded. And he had trouble praying. I got down with him. I like to get right down with them reprobates. I got right down with him. I said, buddy, what's your hang-up? You know, he was hung up for your hang-ups. He said, brother, man, I just can't repent. And I said, what's your trouble, man? He said, it's my car. And I said, well, I used to be in that trouble, but I quit driving forwards. What are you talking about? He said, no, you don't understand. He said, it's not my car I drove to church tonight. I stole the car to come and hear you preach. He said, I saw the advertisement in the paper, and he said, he said I wanted to come hear you so bad that I was going down the street, and I saw a car with some keys in it, and I just got in the car and took one off and drove out here, and here I am, and I can't repent with that hot wheel sitting out there. I said, you ignorant turkey. He said, what should I do? And I said, take that car back to the owner apologize, offer to pray for any of the damages, tell him you'll make it right, either turn me up or down one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And he said, make it all right. And I said, come back to the revival, and then you can repent. He was gone about an hour, and he come running in the door. He never stopped, shook hands. He ran to that altar and slid with his legs under the altar and laid flat on his back. Hallelujah. In about two minutes, he was talking in tongues as God baptized him in the Holy Ghost. One year later, he was pastoring a church in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A guy that was a car thief, a guy that drank and the cops beat him up and put him in jail. He was torn apart. The lion had shook him to pieces. But thank God one night in a crusade, the shepherd reached down and took the remnant and made something beautiful out of it. Hallelujah. 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 Don't it feel good in here? Man, this is Saturday Night Live. Hallelujah. 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 That other mess on the tube is Saturday Night Dead. This is live. Hallelujah. This is alive in Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. The shepherd and the remnant. The shepherd and the remnant. I'm talking to somebody in this place tonight that the lion of sin, the devil, has sunk its fangs in your life. You have thought, my God, is there an answer anywhere, any place? But you have come to where the shepherd is tonight. He can reach down and he can pick you up. Amos said he goes to the lion and he takes out a remnant, two legs, a piece of an ear. Maybe that's all that's left. 
Your youth is gone. Your health is broken. Mine was when I came to God, my eyes was bad. I took so much drugs that my teeth got loose and fell out. These pretty white teeth cost me $500. Somebody said, you sure got pretty white straight teeth, brother. My hand needs to be an all-in fight. <laughs> got a good dentist. Hallelujah. My heart beat funny for a long time. My eyes was bad. My eyes went bad from drugs. Been stabbed five times. Got 20 tattoos on my body. Been shot at. My only brother strangled to death from an overdose of drugs. Saw my best friend climb up five stories and dive off and his head bust on the cement like a watermelon. Another one of my friends took a claw hammer and beat his mother to death with a claw hammer. Another took a pistol and put it in his brother's mouth and blew his brother's brains all over the wall. Another took a pill and smothered his 83-year-old grandma for three bucks. Our lives were just about gone. But one day a shepherd came up. The shepherd walked to the lion, and the shepherd jerked out what was left and said, let me make something of it. Hallelujah. Oh, God, let me make something of it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 When we was in Israel, the first place I wanted to go was Calvary. Every five minutes I'd ask a guy, how far to Calvary? How far to Calvary? I asked that about 15 years ago too one day, how far to Calvary? It wasn't far, just as close as saying Jesus. Finally, one day, they said, we're going to Calvary today. We went to Calvary. I'll never forget the first time I saw Calvary. They had a fence around it. Some of you folks that's been to Israel, they had a fence around it. They had put pieces of broken glass on the fence. And I asked the guy, I said, why this? And he said, because when a fugitive, when the cops are chasing somebody, there's something about Calvary. There's something about this hill. They run to this hill. The fugitive and the vagabond run to this hill, and they hide in the rocks of Calvary. It looks like a skull there in the rocks, and they hide here in the rocks of Calvary. And I thought, thank God there's still room for a fugitive. Hallelujah. They can fence up that Calvary over there all they want to, but they can't fence up the one our Lord went to. There's a hiding place. There's a hiding place. God spoke to me when I came to Stockton, California. God spoke to me and said, you're going to preach to people if you don't reach them. This is it. God's drawn you to this service tonight, fella, because he wants to take what's left of your life. And he wants to make something beautiful out of it. I wish I could let you see the vision of hell I saw. When I was just a young preacher and first started preaching, I saw a vision of hell. I saw him twisting and turning and falling and clawing and scratching and kicking and screaming. I saw him wallowing in the madhouse of the universe over and over and over. Friend, you talk about living in hell all your life and then have to spend hell, eternity in hell. Can you imagine? I tasted all the loneliness of this life I wanted without being lonely for eternity. I tasted all the heartbreak of this life I wanted without being heartbroken for eternity. I tasted all the rejection in this life I wanted without being rejected for eternity. The shepherd has come to revival service tonight. Something. June 1981. Listen, I don't want anybody else moving in and out of this place till I get through with this altar call. I realize that there's times you've got to take children. I've got three of them. I've hauled them out many a time. But they can wait five minutes now till I get through this altar call. The shepherd is looking for that one lost sheep tonight. The shepherd had a hundred sheep. He took them out to pasture. He brought 99 back to the sheepfold, and there was one sheep out there lost. That's who I'm after tonight, that one lost sheep. He took the light, and he shined it around the hillsides and the rocks and the precipice and the briars. Finally heard the cry, that one lost sheep, and he reached down, and he picked up that sheep and put it on his shoulder and said, Come on home, honey. God's here looking for somebody that's been bruised by sin tonight. The shackles of sin has bruised your body. You know you've got to find something. And God's reaching across this place. I want every head bowed, every eye closed.
Don't turn Jesus away tonight, sir. Don't turn Jesus away tonight, lady. Young person, don't say no to him. I may never get a chance to preach to you again. I cannot count on both of my hands the people I've preached the last message I ever got to hear. Went into eternity out of the presence of the shepherd of the ages. Nobody looking every head, bowed every eye closed. Could you raise your hand and say, pray for me, preacher? Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. You're not joining the church. You're just saying, hey, sometime before that line of sin ravages me too much to be repaired, I want the shepherd to come down and take what's left. You that raised your hand without hesitation, without reservation, I want you to come to this altar immediately right now. Come on, hurry. Hurry, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on to this altar. Something beautiful. Come on. Come on. God's drawing you. Come on. The shepherd of the shepherd is shoulder of the shepherd's waiting for you. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Oh God. Oh God. All I have to offer him. Come on. Come on, friend. Come on to this altar. Let God do something with your life. Come on, buddy, let God take that broken, torn, twisted, shattered life. And let him take what's left and let him make something beautiful out of it. Come on. The Holy Ghost is pulling people to this altar. Come on. Praise God. Beautiful. Something good. Come on, the Holy Ghost is pulling people to this altar. Confusion. The shepherd wants to meet you down here. The shepherd wants to meet you at an old-fashioned altar and say, Come on, honey. I'll take what's left. To offer him was brokenness. Come on, let the Holy Ghost draw you. Come on, don't turn him away. He'll make something beautiful of my life. Oh, something beautiful. Oh, God. Something good. Come on. Praise God. All my confusion. All my confusion. Jesus understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something. Beautiful. Come on. 